Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I made my first set of cards using the March 2022 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I debuted the newest sheet load of cards, March 2022, and told you how you could download the free printable. If you haven't yet seen that video and you would like to download it, I do have the debut video linked in the description box below. This month's sheet load will yield you six cards from six pieces of pattern paper and some card stock. Another thing that makes it special is it was inspired by a card I found over on Instagram by Anya Lenchenko, and she is at anya.l.studio there. I have her Instagram account and her blog linked in the description box below. I hope you'll go visit her, follow her, and leave her some love. Don't forget that also today, my team of collaborators will be sharing their cards. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. To see the cards that they have created, you're going to use the hashtag that is up on screen now, and I do also have it linked in the title. Now to go over to Instagram, you can either search for that same hashtag, or I do have a search link in the description box below. Now, if you're going to create cards with this month's sheet load and want to share them, I would love for you to use the two hashtags at the top of the printable. I search for those off and on throughout the month here on YouTube and over on Instagram. I always love to see what you're creating and sharing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the products that I'll be using today and then we'll get started on the process. In front of me are the main supplies that you'll see me using. I chose six pattern papers from the Sunshine and Rainbows paper pad from Stampin' Up. I recently had a subscriber slash channel member who is also a crafty YouTuber send these to me as a little gift. Her name is Carmen and I do have her channel linked in that description box. To create my focal points and my sentiment, I got out my favorite things, Micro Cloud Edges Stencil and their Happy Rainbows dies, along with a Spellbinders Oval and the stamp set that I recently created in collaboration with Not Too Shabby. I will be using the sentiments for today's cards and I will be doing a little bit of ink blending in Gina K Design's Ocean Mist with my new blue waffle flower blending brush. Try saying that three times fast. Now, if you did not get a chance to pre-order my stamp and stencil bundle, at the end of the month, when the order comes in, if there are any extras left over to purchase, I will let you know about that. But I do want to say a huge thank you to those of you who did pre-order it. I was overwhelmed by your support. Speaking of support, I want to take a minute to give a little shout out to my channel members. Their monthly support keeps me here crafting and keeps Sheetload free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, which membership starts at just $1.99 a month, I do have a link in the description box below. As I get into the process, I will let you know about other products and tools that I bring in. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm gonna get started today by cutting down my pieces of six by six pattern paper 
per the instructions on the cutting guide. Now don't forget if your pattern paper has a direction, you'll want to keep that in mind when you make the first cut. I wanted my stripes to go horizontally, so I cut five and a half inches off the top, and then I rotated that piece and I cut two one inch wide pieces, and then the next strip was three inches wide. This piece got rotated and I cut it into a piece that was three and a half inches tall and one that was two inches tall. I will use those leftover strips later for some decoration on the cards. Now for my pattern papers, I did choose two sets of the three same patterns, but you could always do two sets of three different patterns. Here's a look at all of the pieces cut up. Next up, I'm gonna cut down two pieces for CS1. I chose vellum for mine. I like the way that you get a separation from the other pieces, but that you can still see through it just a little bit. For these, I'm gonna cut five and a half inches off the top side again, and then that piece gets rotated and cut into three pieces that are three and a quarter inches wide. Now that piece on the bottom, that is going to end up being my little fishtail banner strip across the card. It kind of hides where the two pattern papers meet later. I cut this instead of the three and three quarters inches wide given on the instruction sheet, I cut mine to four and a quarter inches by one half inch because later you'll see that I'm gonna be using a paper punch and it takes off about a quarter inch on both ends. Normally the next step for me would be to cut my CS2, but I'm actually going to be using scraps for this. Off camera, I did cut three pieces of cardstock in half and fold those into top folding card bases. To get my fishtail on each end of the vellum piece, I will be using this punch from Stampin' Up, but I do want to show you that if you do not have a punch like this, this is something you can easily cut by hand. You'll just make a little cut into each end and then cut in from the outside edge to that point. Don't forget though, if you are going to do it by hand, you will want to stick to the original measurement of three and three quarters inches wide. But since I had that punch, I went ahead and used that until I had all six strips punched. Next, I laid out all of my pattern papers so I could put together the card kits or what pattern papers go for each card. You'll notice that I did select a different pattern for each of the areas, making sure for the skinny strip that I picked up two for each card. Because of the way the pieces go together, if you do select the correct pattern papers in the right order, each card can end up looking a little bit different from the rest of them. If your pattern paper is double-sided, you also might want to check and see if the back side would look okay with some of the patterns as well. Next, I'm gonna show you how to put piece B and C onto the vellum mat. These are the larger of the pattern paper pieces. And what I did was I added adhesive to the back of piece B or the largest one. And this gets centered on the top of the vellum strip. You'll notice the top is right against the top edge of the vellum. The smaller piece gets adhesive and added to the bottom center. Now you might find that yours overlap a little bit or there's a little gap there, but that will be okay because later that will be hidden by that little fishtail banner strip. I'll show you here how I do the second one and the rest of these I did do off screen. Now I'm gonna show you how I put these two card fronts together. I start by adding the skinny strips, one to each side of the card front, and then the gap between those is covered up with the piece of vellum that I just put the pattern papers onto. You could always add that center piece with some foam tape if you wanted some added dimension. If I had not made my fishtail piece from vellum, this would now be the time that I added it to the card. But because I don't know what areas will be covered later so I can hide the adhesive, for now I'm just gonna set that to the side and continue putting those card fronts together.
Now I'm going to get started on my focal points. I will be using that Gina K Ocean Mist ink along with my blue blending brush to make a cloud background for my ovals. Now I'm going to use this one stencil. It isn't quite six inches wide, so I make sure before I get to the right edge that I do move it and just line it up as best as I can with the pattern that is already created. Then for the next row, it gets turned and adjusted, and I keep doing this until the entire piece is filled up with clouds. After all of the ink blending was done, I took my piece off screen with that oval and I cut out six clouds. Now that original piece only got me four ovals, so I did have to do two more off screen. To continue with the rainbow theme from the pattern paper, I will be using this MFT die to cut some arcs from pattern papers from that same pad. Now because there are four arcs in the rainbow, I did choose four different patterns and I took this off screen and I cut four copies. Then when those were done, I arranged the arcs so each one was different for each rainbow and I started to get these adhered to those cloud backgrounds. I did this with my fine tip glue bottle with art glitter glue inside and I started with the outside piece of the rainbow so I would know exactly how that would fit on the oval. Once I had those four arcs in place, I did set it to the side to dry. And you might be like, Alicia, there are only four rainbows there. You're correct. At first, I did just cut those four rainbows and I finished the rest of the rainbows and the rest of the gluing of the arcs off screen. And here's a look at those finished focal points. For my sentiments, I wanted to be able to just send these to anybody for any occasion, so I chose the Hello Friend from my Abstract Botanical stamp set. Off camera, I cut some white pieces of cardstock for the sentiment so that after all of the stamping is done, I can once again use that fishtail banner punch on each piece and still have some extra white space on the ends. Now it's time to figure out where my focal point and sentiment will go on the card so I know where I can add adhesive for the vellum fishtails. And it pretty much covers up the entire area where those two pattern papers meet. So I put some liquid glue there and I center the fishtail banner kind of across where they meet and left to right. I get my sentiment added to the oval and I only put adhesive on about half of the back. The rest will hang off from the oval and go across the card. And because the card is pretty flat so far, I bring in my big blue rolls of foam tape and I use two different sizes on the back so that I have some nice lift and everything is nice and sturdy. Once that first card is done, I put together the remaining five in kind of an assembly line order. I do that by getting all of the sentiments added to the ovals, and then I get all of the vellum pieces added to the card bases. And then finally, I add the foam tape to the back of my focal points and get those put on the card fronts. If you've been around my channel long, you know that my cards usually aren't finished until I add a little bling. For my cards today, I got out my Moonshine 3mm Fully Cup Sequins from Cartwrights and I added three to the front of each card. I placed down some mini glue dots in kind of a triangle and then I added a sequin to each of those dots with my jewel picker. I continue to add these until all of the cards are done, and here's a little look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made this month's cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators. You can click on the hashtag in the title or use those links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.